few weeks here on my property have been rather chaotic. If you watched my most recent video, you know that I just got this raised and contained vegetable garden installed. These timbers came from the back of the property and I had to get them out of there before everything else could take place. So before I begin to tell you about everything that's taken place over the last couple of weeks, I do have to tell you that I did have another dead bird here on the property. I know that uh, there's a lot of you that think that these dead birds are rather peculiar and I do too. I can't really explain uh, some of the things that happen with the dead birds that I see around my property. This one though, I think might have just been by pure accident. The night before all the work was set to begin here on the property and after I just got these garden beds built, I was awakened in the middle of the night by a loud metallic crash. And I had a dump trailer sitting here on the property and I thought for sure that something had run into that dump trailer. I came out to investigate though and I could not find anything. I went back to sleep and didn't give it much more thought. The next morning, I had the locator show up on the property. So the guy is here to do locates on the property, but this morning I was woken up because something hit the roof. Well, that something happened to be a hawk. It appears the hawk had crashed into the roof, broke its neck and had fallen to its death. I'm not sure why that would happen. Maybe it was old age and he just fell out of the sky. Maybe he was chasing something and looking at it as opposed to looking at where he was going and broke his neck. But either way, another bird incident here on the property. That makes two in two weeks. So kind of uh, bad timing, I guess, more than anything. But once that bird was disposed of, the locator was able to begin the work that he needed to do to survey the property for utilities. I do have a power pole that sits next to the cabin that is providing the main power coming in. And then I have a private line that runs from the main cabin back to this bunkhouse that sits behind me. We have a couple of issues. One is, is that that power pole needs to stay where it's at because it is active and there is a lot of power coming into there. It turns out that that pole actually has primary power to it. And that means that I have enough power off of here that I could supply anything I need to here on the property, which is awesome. And it also means that if I needed to add additional power to say the future shop, I don't have to call in the electric company to do it. I can have a private contractor run the taps directly off that pole. One issue that that provides is getting all these trees down without damaging any underground wiring because the depth on that wire is 18 inches. It should be anywhere from 36 to 48 inches deep, but it's not. So luckily for me that when that power pole was put in, it got the top of the line installation. And that means that I have enough power coming into my property that I could subdivide this lot and build 50 additional homes on this property if I wanted to and be able to power all of them. Don't worry, I'm not gonna do that. I have no plans of selling or moving or anything like that. I'm here to stay. But what it does also mean is that when I build anything else on this property, such as my future shop, I'll have enough power going into that shop to provide my electrical needs for whatever I might want to do in there. But we have a couple of issues. So not only is the line going from the main power pole to the main cabin very shallow, but as it makes its way from the main cabin to the bunkhouse, it doesn't get any better. In fact, it gets worse. So as you can see, the power line is running right across the driveway here and going up into the bunkhouse. The issue that I have is right here. The power line here is only about five inches deep. And if it's gonna fault, it's gonna fault right there. And the other thing is, is that where it's coming into the bunkhouse, right there on the cable itself is indoor tape on this hot wire. So all of that needs to be repaired. It's about nine inches coming out of the main cabin. And when it gets to this point right here, it's only five inches deep. This means that as the ground heaves due to frost 
or if a vehicle were to come through here and get stuck or drive a rock down into that area, there's a chance that that line could have a fault in it. The line would remain hot and it means that I could lose the bunkhouse as well as my main cabin due to an electrical fire. This is where the private line runs from the cabin going to the bunkhouse. There's a couple of issues with this. One is it is sitting so tight up against the edge of the cabin that if there was any movement in this cabin, say due to an earthquake, it could potentially slice the exterior uh, protective coating or coaxial part of the electrical line and expose the wires that are in there, leaving them to be live and hot and therefore I might lose my cabin to an electrical fire. So that needs to be remedied. One other thing is, is that as the line progresses away from the cabin making its way to the bunkhouse, it's very shallow. It's only about nine inches deep right here in front of the cabin and it gets more and more shallow as we go that direction. Last year when I had the roof replaced on the cabin, the front support beams needed to be replaced. All four of these logs came from the property and the new supports were hand dug. Luckily, we did not have a fatality because the main electricity line that is coming out of the cabin runs actually through the hole that was dug for this post. Now this was all hand dug, but even though it was hand dug, there was the potential that somebody could have struck that line with their shovel. Had they done so, they would have been electrocuted. So let this be a lesson to you that regardless of the amount of work that you're doing on your property, even if you're hand digging something, you should call for locates. I wish we had called for locates last year uh, because the guys would have been a lot more cautious than they may have been. Luckily, nobody was hurt, but my estimation is, is that they were probably right on top of that line. One other thing is, last year when the work was done, they discovered this line here that is cut. As the next locator came out, he showed that there is a line that was running right in conjunction with that cut line right there to the bunkhouse. That was the phone line running to the bunkhouse. So luckily they're upgrading the services in this area. And that means that when they come out to install the new lines to my home, I'll also have them install a new line to the bunkhouse. But again, it just goes to show that without locates, you don't know what you're going to hit. So do your locates. So enough ranting about the locates and how shallow the line is here on the property. But it does mean that I need to get an electrician out here, not only to retrench the driveway and run that new line and correct any faults and issues that there are between the connections but also because I need to have some new breaker boxes installed in the cabin and have the cabin rewired. There's live lines in the cabin that are exposed. I've since capped those off and taped them off so that they can't be uh, handled or bumped into, but nonetheless, they're there and they need to be remedied as well as the lines should really be in some conduit so there isn't an accident where you accidentally knock something into it and wind up cutting through the coax and hitting that live line and causing yourself to become electrocuted. I'm talking about myself here. Um, so getting the cabin rewired, getting new breaker boxes put in, all of those things have to be done. All right, enough about that. Let's talk about some of the other things that took place here on the property after the surveyor left. As soon as the surveyor left, the next thing to do was put that bulldozer to work. The work has begun to start clearing the property of some of the trees. Part of this is to create a fire break between the woods and the cabin. And part of it is because trees like this giant one right here 
have started to show signs of dying and I need to get it removed before it takes itself out. Also, these stands of trees right here where the bulldozer is currently knocking down trees, that is going to make way for some future projects yet to come. Those will be one to two years out, but while I have the help, I'm gonna take it to clear these. The person who's running the bulldozer is also um, going to be leveling the back of the property. So all of that is coming up. I'm going to sell that tree for lumber. I'm actually possibly gonna be trading it for some other services that I need done here. Once those things were done, then the contractors moved to the back of the property. On the back of my property, I had this big, ugly, yellow building that was what I called a foam yurt. It was essentially a three or four log high pony wall with a teepee frame covered in canvas that was then covered in closed cell foam. It had old car windows in it that had been busted out as the windows for the building. Um, the previous owners had used it as a chicken coop and it was very untidy in there. It wasn't really usable. It had many leaks coming in from the roof and was starting to show signs that it was gonna come down on its own. So my contractor took the bulldozer to it and got that cleared out of the way. And then after that, he took down that giant mound of dirt that was behind the cabin. That mound of dirt came out from underneath my cabin when they built the root cellar. This cabin was built in 1970 and it did have some sort of a basement in it at one point because the wood stove that I used to burn my garbage in used to be the wood stove that heated this cabin and it was located below the cabin itself. The next set of owners that came in removed that wood stove and put it out in the yard to burn trash with and then they dug out just eight years ago so again, many, many years after this cabin was built, they dug out a full basement underneath the cabin itself. It's not truly a basement because it doesn't have any means of egress other than the hatch to come in and out of it. So essentially it is truly just a cellar. It's a very large cellar though, being 30 by 30 feet in uh, dimension. But all the dirt that came out from underneath the cabin when they put that in, that all went behind the cabin and it's set there for the last almost decade. And so luckily my contractor was able to take his bulldozer and level that mound of dirt and push it towards the back, which will provide me an area that I can set up as my shooting range and also remove that eyesore of that mound of dirt. Once that was done, then he began to do work on clearing the old garden. So there's the greenhouse and the security camera that I was showing in an earlier video where I was saying that there was no line of sight over towards the cabin. Well, there's the cabin and that big stand of trees. And thank goodness the bulldozer is making its way through the garden now and clearing all of this mess away.
Now, there are many of you who would have liked to have seen me utilize that old garden for my future garden. However, it really wasn't in the best position for what my plans are for this property. For one, it was overrun by grass and tree roots that just made the beds unusable. I would have had to dig it all out anyhow to plant in it. And it was easier to have it bulldozed than it was for me to do that work. As I mentioned in a previous video, the kitchen garden is actually gonna go right outside the back door. I had that back door put in last summer, thanks to another set of contractors that I had out here on my property. And that means that I'll be able to just walk right out that door and get whatever vegetables I need for cooking. In addition, I'm gonna have a outdoor kitchen built right next to that garden. Those things will be right outside the back of the cabin. But then where the garden was, that might actually be the home of my future workshop. <laughs> the life of a supervisor. Here I am sitting in my comfy camp chair watching my contractor knock down trees. Well, I got caught sitting on the job and so I was put to work. My contractor uh, allowed me to drive the bulldozer for a little bit to push a load down to the other end of the property. Kenai, on the other hand, he was not happy about it. Maybe he just wanted a ride in the bulldozer. Hmm, maybe. So I decided to get out of the cabin today and I am going down to Valdez where I'm gonna hit a couple of the consignment or thrift stores and just see what they have. Just get out of the cabin and off the property for a bit, get away from some of the craziness that's going on there and enjoy a day in Valdez. workers from the flaggers to the ones running the heavy equipment it's 
kind of a pain to sit in the traffic uh, that's congested because of the construction. But honestly, if it wasn't for them, these roads would not be passable. So thank you to all of you who are working for the Department of Transportation here in Alaska. <laughs> curious about why I show so much driving and scenery in my videos it's because driving is my life here in Alaska during these summer months is my time to resupply and to get things that I might need and the majority of things that I might need to purchase are going to be located anywhere from 50 to 300 miles away from where my cabin is situated so honestly I'm only showing about 0.5 percent of the actual amount of driving that I'm doing in the winter months I do stay put so this is my time to stock up I hope you enjoy the ride along because I sure appreciate the company Once in Valdez, I went to the Weathered Anchor Antique Store 
as well as the second time around thrift store. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to film in either one of those stores, though the Weathered Anchor is super cute and they even have a clothing section that I did get some clothing and some other things. I'll show you my haul here in just a little bit. But after I went to, to these two stores, I went to Orca Bay Trading Post, which has an army surplus section, as well as a bunch of uh, unique items. It's such a fabulous little store. This meal is really good, but one of the things I'm enjoying most about sitting outside while eating it, there's no mosquitoes. It's really bizarre. I thought for sure I'd be just swarmed with them all down here. Nope, not a one. At the second time around store, I picked up these two decanters that I plan on using for my mouthwash. My mouthwash base is alcohol. 
and I really am not comfortable with having a bottle of alcohol sitting out in the open. I'm not a drinker and I don't really want people thinking that I am. And so I'm gonna disguise my mouthwash by putting it into one, if not both of these decanters. And then I picked up this cute little candle lantern. I think it's adorable. And then at the Weathered Anchor, I picked up these two library desk lamps. I plan on putting these on top of the two dressers that I just picked up off of Craigslist. I know they don't match and they do need a little cleaning up, but they will work for up there. I sleep in the middle of my bed and uh, depending upon where Kenai is sleeping on the bed, it means that I'll have a reading light by either side of the bed for me. So super cute on those. Those were a great find. And then as I mentioned at the Weathered Anchor, she has a used clothing section. And so I picked up these two cute little white tops, that little yellow top, and then also this orange jacket. In addition to that, I also picked up the green jacket that you saw me wearing while at the Nat Shack. And she, the girl working at the Weathered Anchor said, I look like a little strawberry. I thought it was super funny because I had on my pink gingham dress. I also received this insulated coffee mug with lid from Lonnie Poe. Greatly appreciated. And then I received this amazing selection of things from Alita, uh, I think she goes by Anne, from San Antonio, Texas. And she sent quite a variety of things. She sent some patriotic dish towels, super cute, a little coffee um, cozy, and a little toolbox full of some little handy gadgets and tools, a couple of dog toys for Kenai, um, some removable labels, some little containers, some kitchen shears, and a um, egg beater so that I can make whipped cream without having to use a whisk. And then also she sent some little personal care items and those little sunglasses there I think would be so adorable with that little green jacket and my pink gingham dress. The timing on that couldn't have been any better. I got a great big smile on my face when I saw that. She also sent these leaded glass uh, candle votives and some flameless tea lights. So thank you for that, as well as the little notepad, a handwritten note, and this super cute outdoor thermometer. I just adore all of this. So thank you. In addition, I also received an array of fabrics and threads from my mom, along with a little uh, machine embroidered a toilet paper holder, which I thought was kind of funny and cute, um, some cotton batting and interfacing, and a little carrying case to hold it all in. So thank you everybody for quite the amazing selection of things that you sent to me. I just want to say I really appreciate all of you, including the two stores and people who donate to them. Yeah, thank you very much. I do think these rose-colored glasses make things look better, including this ensemble. This is the little green jacket that I picked up, and as you can see, I do look like a little strawberry, maybe strawberry shortcake in our later years. But nonetheless, I also want to put a thank you out there to my contractors for not only all the work that they've done, they still have some additional work to do. As you can see, there's still some trees behind me here. I'm standing just outside of the a vegetable garden and in front of the outhouse and all those trees still need to come down. So that work is still coming up. I also want to say thank you to my contractors for allowing me to learn how to drive the bulldozer. That was quite fun and for filming me while I do so. But please don't quit your day jobs. You guys make much better uh, contractors for doing this type of work than you do cameramen. Just saying. <laughs> But thanks, I do appreciate you holding the camera nonetheless. I have an upcoming fishing trip that I hope to bring you on and some other adventures next week. I will be answering some of your questions and taking you along on that trip, hopefully, as well as giving you a behind the scenes look into my life. In the meantime, I hope that you like this video, that you will like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I also, uh, would like to welcome you to stick around for some outtakes. I keep thinking that Dewey's gonna sneak out from behind me. 
But until next time, please stay safe and take care. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. Cute little butterfly. To another set of contractors that I had out here on site. Those contractors were able to put that door in as well as, um, yeah, I don't know what I was going to say there. Because there was a bee that flew in front of the camera and caused me to lose my train of thought. I'm talking way too much and I need to be moving. So let's move, shall we? I'm a filthy mess <laughs> and I haven't even been doing any of the work, but uh, I'm still not. I'm gonna sit here and watch my contractor knock down trees. Kenai is such a spoiled dog, eating cookies in bed, making a mess at that. Yes, I'm looking at you.